worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. Cause he opened prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Come on, there's joy. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Come on, we sing. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God still rolled his doors away. Come on! There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Come on, sing it out. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. 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 Come on, sing with us tonight. There's joy in the house. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. For we were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We are the beggars. Now we're royalty. We are the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Come on, let's sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Surely in 
this place and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your Before we move on from this, man, I just really had it so hard on me, man. I'm telling you right now, there is joy in the house. But let me just say this, okay? Sometimes we are not very joyful. Sometimes it's because of circumstances or situations or people or this or that. The enemy will always try to come for your joy. Why? Come on, I know I got a scholar up in this house somewhere. Why does he try to steal our joy? Come now, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And guess what? Let me give you a little secret. Nobody can steal or take your joy. You own you. You own your emotions and you can take it back. Sometimes the enemy of your soul will try to steal your joy. It's not about even people or situations or circumstances. Just sometimes he comes in like a flood. I'm here tonight to inform you that he has no power. No power in the name of Jesus. I command him as a spiritual authority in this house to be brought low in the name of Jesus. And I command your joy in your spirit to rise up right now. I say according to the word of God that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I'm telling you now to tap into it. You don't give the enemy not one little foothold. Not one little foothold. If you lay down to him, he'll run over you. He will take advantage and run over you. Don't give him one inch in your life. Don't stay hugged up with the enemy. Tell him to get somewhere in the name of Jesus. Come on one more time. I want you to go into this with understanding tonight that there is joy in this house. There is joy in the presence of God and the joy of the Lord is your strength. I'm not telling you something I read. I'm telling you something I walk out. I have allowed things to control me all my life and I have older and, and, and just realized that I don't have to tolerate it. I don't have to tolerate it because I am kingdom minded and I understand who I am. I understand the power that resides within me. And you might get me for a little minute, but you ain't getting me for long. Right now, right now, right now, I want you to lift your head up. I want you to give God a sacrifice of praise. There's a reason why it's called sacrifice. Because sometimes you don't feel it. Sometimes it's not in there. I want you to override your feelings and do what you know. I promise you the word of God is true and it works, man. It works. But you got to work it. It's like AA. It's got great principles, but if you don't put them in place, they ain't going to work for you. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And we welcome you into our situation. Lord, we ask that you would line us out right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We're careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Because you're worthy, worthy, worthy. Lord, we just love you. We submit and surrender to you tonight. We ask that you restore our joy. Lord, we 
we ask that you would reveal truth to us, Father God. Let your word be true in every man a lie. Father, we didn't come here for a form or a fashion. We came here to meet with you. And I'm asking you to descend upon your people. Wash over them with fresh oil. Lift up the weary ones, Lord God. Strengthen and encourage the discouraged ones, Lord. For those who are confused and can't see a clear path, I'm asking, Father, that you would give fresh vision. I pray that they dream dreams. I pray that they would settle in right now and trust you, Jesus. For you alone are faithful, Lord God. Let us always look for you in every situation, Lord. We don't give the enemy one lick, not one lick. We understand that you are ordering our steps, that you are controlling our lives, Lord God, because we have surrendered to you and you have all authority and we submit to that, Lord God. However that looks, we thank you, Jesus. Come on, if you thank the Lord and you give him glory and you're just excited to be. Come on. Come on, there's joy in this house tonight. Sing it loud. Sing it strong like a warrior that you are. Come on.
says that every house and every kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. You can clap on that. And every city or every house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? Wait a minute. I read that and realized that I can't cast out my flesh. I got to turn from it. I've been laying up against the wall. See, God, get this thing off of me. But it's really, it's up to me. I can't divide myself. Secret of Satan is to divide your wife against you. If you can't be with you, then how can you stand? If your wife can't be in the same room with you, how can you stand? If your children won't bow down or abide in your authority, how can you stand as a leader and authority in the home? My God, is, am I talking to anybody but myself? has this problem with himself yes. it's called obedience yes. every marriage has this problem it says I want to be the boss yes. but the head of the wife is the husband and I'm going to be honest with you sometimes I run to my wife for an answer and ain't nothing wrong with that my wife's smart she's been married to me for 33 years <laughs> listen I'm the blessed one I'm going to sit here and tell it to you of no no you gotta come back and give that now you can't don't 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 let me steal the show on that but I'm not the boss here Ricky and Miss Jeannie is the strong man because it says how can I bind the strong man unless I enter in the strong man's house well unless you're stronger than him you can't bind him can you if he's benching 400 and you at 250, you're going to need some help. It's called, bre it's called brethren. Because if two touch any one thing and ask according to faith, it shall be done. So if he's benching 400, huh? See, there's a secret in the kingdom that you don't know. The Bible says if one can set 1,000 and two can set 10,000, you have multiplied forces. That's why God and Elijah told him, let down the veil so he can see that there's more with you than there is against you. Listen, you have have a thing called a mouth a tongue a teeth with two lips and it's got the word of God on the inside of it you can turn away from whatever you want to turn away you've got two ears quit listening to the strong man quit listening to the liar quit listening to the flesh I am talking to myself turning away is quit yielding to I didn't come here to preach tonight just hit me. 
me and I knew it was for me. And maybe uh, uh, Brother Shuttlesworth said 20% of the message that I preach are for me. I'm thinking 80% is the one for me. And 20% is for you, man. I, I preached the last time we came to Kingdom Forward. Didn't mean to. It just kind of Ricky Sinclair said, you got something? And if I don't have Jesus, I don't have anything. If the strong man that's stealing my goods is robbing me, how will I ever get prosperous? How will my marriage enrich? How will I become the man of God? I don't think I'm dead enough yet. I'm just going to put it on the table. Confess your sins before one another and the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I didn't come here to be somebody. I came here because somebody invited me. You can break the strong man of defeat and dishonor by bringing them to an honorable place. You can break addiction. Listen, guys, you just picked a hard substance. The biggest addiction in the world is an invisible substance that you listen to all the time that leads you away from God. You can just say no to the one that you have. You think we weren't all drug addicts at one time? Really? In Spanish, it sounds good. Cocaina. <laughs> But it ain't. It's a terror. Because you could put your hands on it. Well, you can't run away from you. And if you do, you're divided. And that's why the enemy's conquering your mind, your will, and your emotion. Brother Ricky, it ain't my night. Hallelujah. Let's give God another greatest shout, the greatest praise. Hallelujah. Hey, let me ask you something before we turn Pastor Gideon loose. Did Pastor Michael Carsentina say something? And I don't know if you picked it up, but he just bore his whole heart before us like naked in church and told us what he's dealing with. And you know what he said? He said, you got to conquer you. And until you conquer you, <laughs> look, he said, you're the problem. Not everybody else out here. Every time you point your finger, there's three pointing back. It's you. And you know, if you are living your life and there's always a problem everywhere you go, it's like that guy that when he ran into someone, he jumped out of his car and said, you're no good, son of a gun. He says, you're the third one that's hit me today. I wonder whose fault it was. <laughs> Are y'all alive? So, Brother Mike, thank you. Thank you for being obedient to the Lord. And that's what we want in this place. And God changed me. Somebody say, God help me. Help me, help me conquer me, God. Help me die, Lord, to self and live unto you, God. The only problem with a living sacrifice is it always wants to get up off the altar. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had the news that the storm was coming and instantly I got diarrhea. <laughs> I'd never heard nothing about the storm. So when they said the storm was going to hit Louisiana, I began to imagine how I'm going to die in the storm and how I won't be able to see my beautiful wife and my children and the ministry that we were doing. I got diarrhea. I'm not kidding. They gave me medicine to treat diarrhea. Hey, he, let me interpret for him. He said diarrhea. <laughs> I thought I was speaking English. 
but I want to ask I want to ask you to join me we give God one second stand up on our feet and give God a highest praise and shout he calls he saved us from the storm two tablets that I took and this morning I was supposed to take another dose but when I looked outside and they said that the storm was not coming, diarrhea just stopped. <laughs> Hallelujah! But I've not come to tell you about the, uh, that. I'm just giving a are testimony. Are we family or what? <laughs> I have a scripture that I want to I just have a scripture that I want to read to us that is in Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. And it says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. I just wanted to appreciate you as we're going to give in the house of God for choosing to be wise and partnering with God to win souls into the kingdom. I just came down here to tell you that you and I, we have chosen the right path to be wise, pattern with the Lord and save men, bring souls into the kingdom. I just want to tell you that there is no better way, there is no better way, there is no other way that you have chosen, but to do that, and let me tell you, four years down the road that we have been doing this, partnering together, reaching to the unreached, reaching to the deepest of the communities. You know, we started this during COVID, men of God, when churches were closed down and people had nowhere to turn to. And people were just dying in their family, in their houses, fighting against each other, ch sacrificing their children for the next meal, not knowing what to do. And it was in that middle of desperation, that middle of crying, that middle that we came in and came with the gospel of hope, with the gospel of life, and we began to preach the real gospel, began to preach the real the, 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 the kingdom gospel you know what I mean and we begin to tell people that Jesus loves you no matter what is happening Jesus loves you even when churches are closed Jesus loves you and this shall come to an end you know back home we don't have a lot of internet we don't have screens we don't have nothing and uh, the only source of joy is when we come in the house of god and they tell us that there is more to what we are going through praise the name of the lord so when they closed down churches we were cut right at the heart and we didn't have nowhere to go. And back home, law is law. They tell you, you don't move out of your house. You move out of your house. They will help you to go and be with the Lord. So, and people didn't want to be with the Lord. So people remained in their houses. And back home, it is from hands to mouth. We work for the daily bread. It is not what I am seeing here. When you open the fridge and you are hungry and you look at the food, you just get full before you begin to eat because food is too much and you, you are full before you eat because food is all over. It is not what it is back home. We just have to trust God for every meal. Praise the name of God. So when we wouldn't get that, 
we were shattered down. Our hopes were shut down. And the enemy rejoiced over us and said, this was the end. And that is the time when you guys came and rescued us. That is the time when you came and you rescued us. You gave us hope. You gave us life. And it has been happening. It has been happening. And the fire that started, that fire that started in the lives of people, they began to spread the news that it is happening, that it is happening. It went cross borders. It went to different nations. And they knew that Jesus had come down for them. And what has been happening is incredible. We are tearing down villages and cities for Jesus. And this is being made possible. This is being made possible because of your prayers and because of your giving. And I am here to appreciate you. I am here to tell you that God loves you. He honors your faithfulness. He honors your giving. We are doing this together with our God. And he's, he's pleased with us. Right now where we are, at, it is so big. It has begun to stretch. It has begun to hurt more now. The villages that we would go to on the iron horse, it is now hard. It is far. And these are our children. We can't just give birth to them and we leave them. We have to reach out unto them. But we are saying, God, make a way and provide means so that we can reach to our people. We can go to them. What is happening right now? All over the nations, we have cell groups. The people who have come to the Lord, they enclose themselves in those houses. They raise their hands and worship God. Right this second as we are speaking, it is night, but tomorrow we have overnight prayers. Millions of the people that have come to the Lord right through this panel, they will be raising the holy hands, worshiping Yahweh, worshiping Yahweh and giving him glory. And we are here to ask you that as you have been faithful, as you have been generous, now the work is growing. Let's not lose hope. Let's pattern again. Let's pray again. Let's give again until we take the whole globe for Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah! I want to tell you, if we can love Jesus like I, I saw those boys loving uh, American football, if we can love Jesus like the people love LSU, we are going to take this world for the Lord. We are going to turn this world loose for King Jesus. All over the building, I want to pray for the faithful ones. As we get those seeds that we are sowing in the fertile ground, just get whatever you want to give in the house of God. We are giving in the fertile ground. This gospel has changed us, Bishop. This gospel has changed our marriage. This gospel has changed our families. We never knew how to love our, family, our, our, our wives. Back home, women is a woman is a woman. Woman. That is how culture had taught us. We never had respect for our wives. But this gospel has changed us. Has taught us that we have to serve our families. That we have to serve our, our, our wives and our children. This gospel has completely changed us. You have no idea what you are doing. But you have completely changed the lives of millions and the millions of people. And the Lord is excited for you. Just get your seat and I want to pray for you. For you. Father, we want to thank you for the most generous people on the face of the world. I want to thank you for men and women who have patterned with you and their cry is one. Your kingdom come. 
your kingdom come. And Father, I've seen them bringing the kingdom of God down, not only in Uganda, but in Kenya, but in Tanzania, in all the surrounding nations. We have seen your kingdom come down because of their prayers, because of their giving, because of their faithfulness, because of the ministers that have showed up every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They have been on this ground making one cry, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we have seen it come back home. And I'm praying right now that your kingdom will come in their lives. That your kingdom will come in their marriages. That your kingdom will come in their nation. In the name of Jesus. That you will bless them. That you will multiply them. That the reign of your glory will come down. Meet them at their point of Surprise them all their needs, oh God. Paul says that I know that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Surprise their needs in the name of Jesus. Come out and fight for them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that it is done and it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. our social media community, watch full broadcasts, sign up for our daily devotional, and much more at miracleplace.org.